Sonic Talk. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Sonic Talk, episode 730, recorded today on Wednesday, the 28th of September, uh, 2022 of your Earth years. Uh, very pleased to have everybody here. Nice to see the folks in the chats, the, the YouTube chat, the IRC chat, the Discord, all those places. Everything's functioning as it should. Thanks very much to Wagyu and Dom for their sterling work on the whole chat system and, Dom, mm. and uh, Wagyu for his his moderation in uh, the YouTube, because uh, once you hit a certain number of viewers, you start to attract all kinds of spam, and he's doing a fabulous job of uh, keeping that under under wraps. Uh, maybe he's collecting it for his own private collection. Who knows? Anyway, um, nice to see you all. Uh, this is a music technology podcast. We're not talking about uh, about spam, although I suppose we might do. Uh, just wanted to say uh, thank you very much to everybody for joining us. I will say thanks to Isotope and also to Baby Audio for their uh, support of the show. We'll have some messages from them later on where you can find out exactly how you can uh, benefit from our relationship. <coughs> uh, I want to also say um, thanks to our guests because we have uh, Mr. Ty. Unwin and we have Mr. Rich Hilton but I've just realised there was one other thing that I wanted to do beforehand and that's to plug our Patreon because uh, for those of you who've been watching we've got uh, the OBX8 review is coming up next in the next few days uh, and we also have the extra video which will go out to our uh, additional patrons anyway I'll play that message now Hey, why not consider joining us on Patreon? No, we've got a couple of levels for you. One, if you just want to support, or if you want to really push the boat out, even though it's not actually that expensive, the Sonic State Star tier, which in fact we've just added some extra benefits to that, which include the ability to ask questions previous to a review, uh, or also see the answers to those questions in an exclusive review. In fact, we have got uh, the OBX8 uh, additional questions, user questions that came in via YouTube and various platforms. That will be coming out hopefully towards the end of this week. Uh, in fact, we've also got samples. There's some uh, HD01 synth Percons drum machine samples from Maths. Uh, we've got some Anthony Rother exclusive samples. Uh, he gave us some kick samples that came. Uh, he made actually on I Iridium. Some really interesting stuff there. But we also get all of our stuff ad free and uh, the Sonic Talk pre show. We've got a 12 months subscription up front which will save you an extra 12 or 15 percent if you like uh, but if you join by the end of the show and you're at the upper tier your name will appear in the credits so uh, we do hope you can join us at least have a look around and see what's there thanks for watching so there we go yes i've done my my duties my house uh, my house um housekeeping so let's come and say hello to ty ty unwin composer media guy you've been busy we haven't seen you for so long you're looking well i know you're working hard uh, and I know you you were a yeah. little, you you got the Rona, didn't you? But you recovered and you seem to be back yes. on track. How are you? You well? Yeah, it, yeah, I am now. Yeah, God, it it it's uh, got lots of friends who it just kind of touched gently, and then buggered off. And I was one of the unfortunate touched gently, and then decided it was going to bugger me up for a while. But um, yeah, no, no, fine now. Yeah, uh, back back in action. But not for much longer. So just yeah, finishing this project that I'm on, and then take some time out again. Yay! So I could see. So that's good. Very yeah, so all is good. Uh, an impressive array of screens back there, um, which I, uh, you know, that's obviously work in progress, right? Work, work, and work, work, work. Don't yeah. only get ever illusions. It's any of it's enjoyable. It's all just work. <laughs> so it's. <laughs> It's fine. And I'm blind. There's a combination of it's work and I'm blind. So uh, wow. I have to have everything big and lots of, you know, but. Um, it looks like a great yeah. setup. Yeah, so, no, it's all good. It, well, it is. I, ha I have to say, you haven't you haven't seen it since it's been, yeah, it's all been You got a new desk, didn't you? Last year. I got, did I? I can't remember what I had when you were last here. That's a thing. It's all, I can't remember. It was a there's another back. there's another room been built since you were last here. <laughs> so oh yeah, um, yeah, of course. Yeah, so it's no, it's all all is all is good. And I was actually saying the last time I think I was on was May. So obviously oh, lots wow. of you... new bits of gear and things since since May. So I was going to um, say you must no. definitely you you must certainly have uh, bought some more equipment since then because I I know you're. You know, we know that you like your stuff. Um, anything exciting, yeah. or is it? Just, uh, uh, yeah, anything kind of thrilling? That's the really OBX8 good? is is the OBX8 is nice. Oh, that's right. exciting. And and I Excellent. yeah. So and then I was one of the yeah. Oh, you did the teenager. Yeah. Which just yeah, and the OP1 field, and um, did I buy? Uh, 
Uh, 27, uh, but Kurt's file, 2700, I think, since I was last on. Um, wow, okay. Uh, Nord Wave 2, since I was last on. Uh, and wow. then, actually, some more Vint stuff, D50, Poly 6. Decided to wow. um, buy some of the... I just decided there were certain synths from the 80s and 90s that I just didn't have, or I'd had and missed. And so I just went into that kind of, oh, sod it mode. So, um, so when I've seen, yeah, all those. So yeah, so all is, all is, all is as it should be. I'm so, I'm so glad to hear it. Excellent. (laughs) You can see that there's almost like a sort of, uh, an 80 synth retirement home that there will be where, where all of these synths can just be found (laughs) and taken care of. They'll be put in the day room for visitors to come and tinker with and uh, ultimately. So yeah. Uh, anyway, lovely yeah. to have you on, Ty. It's a pleasure as ever. And uh, we also have Mr. Good Rich Hilton, who uh, is back from one of his um, your in and out gigs, because I know you, you you were sort of doing out and then back, weren't they? I can't remember. You have a term for them uh, where you play keyboards with chic and entertain tens of thousands of people simultaneously. How was your gig? Oh, you're muted. Still muted. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll uh, I'll I'll pedal for a while uh, because I know um, that something's obviously uh, occurred. There's something funny going on in the back in the back end of Rich's OS, I think, um, because we were fit. We were, and I asked him to tinker around with it just beforehand, which may have been uh, a mistake on my part. But we'll get onto that in a bit. But we'll we'll return back to uh, Rich in a sec. Um, I'm just trying to see what we can uh, whether we can go to. Yeah, we could go to. I'll tell you what, I'll play the first video and then we'll come back to Rich uh, when he's with us. That's How about now? Ah, there we go. Yay! There we go. We got you. Yeah, we got you, Rich. How okay. are you? You well? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. Good. And uh, the gig was in a new festival in Arkansas in the center of the U.S. and uh, it was really nice. Uh, Great that's crowd. right. I was, I, I was asking you about food, wasn't I? Did you get, uh, yeah. did, did you get southern, su- uh, southern barbecue? As expected. No, no, but I did have <laughs> some really nice salads with shrimp and stuff like that. So, uh, no, I ate, I ate fine, but uh, didn't get the giant barbecue experience in, in Arkansas that time. Okay, well, lovely to have you, Rich. Um, I was just about to, uh, as I was sort of peddling there while you were uh, d- dealing with your audio thing, uh, I thought we'd, uh, we would have our first video. And this, this is one of those videos that, uh, well, I'll, I'll let it speak for itself. This is a Lego drum machine uh, by uh, Brick Technology, who seem to be specialising in uh, Lego uh, stuff. And it's, it's one of those things you think, how totally pointless, but how amazing. So basically, the, I'm not quite sure who it is specifically that built this. This looks like the sort of more advanced Lego. Um, like the Fisher, they they te- they dealt they kind of connected with somebody called Fisher something or other Fisher Technic I think it was. So anyway, we'll we'll get on. So it starts there, and then we end up into this situation, and then it it grows and grows and grows. We've got motors, we've got this entire row, and then he starts playing tunes. So this is just triggering pads into a, a TD9 I think TD9 brain. Let's have a look, and then there's another song. I couldn't detect any swing. I don't know. I I lo- <laughs> there are two things. There are two. There were rather more than two things I loved about this video. One was I really liked the sound. They did these kind of when they were building stuff. They just took these little tiny um, sort of clicking Lego together and sped them up. And you got these lovely kind of really quite interesting percussive sounds that I thought were actually more interesting than the drum sounds themselves. And then the other thing was I suspect there's more the cost of the Lego involved in that was more than the drum kit uh anyway <laughs> ty i i know that me we always like to throw these kind of it's like man in shed builds cathedral out of matchsticks you, kind of projects know, isn't it you actually save these up until i'm on because it does no, feel honestly. that every time i'm on there's what there's one of these that comes up and every time i say the same thing which is uh <laughs> just because you can doesn't mean, doesn't you, mean should. you should but <laughs> the, the reason this one's different is the fact, well, I just want to go back to your, I could detect any swing. Think about what that would involve to put swing in, which basically know, means yeah. that the motor the has to adjust at the same tempo as each of 
each well, of the as they pass the over to make one slightly. So it's basically yeah, not, you're never going to get swing. It's not going to happen. Um, uh, <laughs> so normally this is the point where I go total waste of time. Obviously, very talented guy, far too much time in his hands. He should be doing something better with his time. But you're talking to someone who was addicted to Lego when they were a kid, ah. and I absolutely loved Lego. Loved it when I was a kid. And uh, I'd stopped doing Lego fairly late. You know, I was in kind of my, it was really kind of not trendy to when you're like 13, 14 to still be doing Lego, but I was. And when my daughter got into Lego, I say got into, I forced her into Lego <laughs> at an early age. And still up in the house, honestly, so much Lego, so much Lego. So for me, I'm kind of at odds here because it is a total waste of time. But I mean, hats off to this guy. Total genius. Absolutely brilliant. Looking at what's gone into it is just absolutely fantastic. And so on the, it's one of the very few occasions, although we know that why it's a fantastic thing to do. And I, I if I had the time... <laughs> I'm actually sitting there as I'm watching this going, God, that's clever. The way that the way that he's actually planned the mechanism is incredibly clever. That's the thing. Yes. Yeah. It's incredibly clever. And and uh I if I had the time, I'd love to be able to do something like this. That, yeah, exactly. There's part there's part of me that wanted to be that guy. I want to do that. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Absolutely. Just sitting there playing playing with Lego. Yeah. So I, and yeah, you're absolutely right. The the end result wasn't wasn't almost wasn't as interesting. Um, it, it, it wasn't. The, it was yeah, great that build, it worked. Build, it's all about the build. It was the yeah. build that was 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 fantastic. So um, yeah, hats off. Absolutely brilliant. Rich, I don't know. Is Lego is Lego a big thing in the states? I think it became so, but I think maybe because it, it was a it's a a, a European. It is actually a European uh, thing. So maybe as kids, we, we were exposed to it earlier than perhaps that uh, the you were in the States. I don't know. Maybe I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm completely wrong there. I'm sure it's massive. Right over, there, you got in like... crawl, right over there in a crawl space is a collection of giant Lego constructions that my kids have done. Well done. That nobody is willing to part with. And so they continue to live over there in the crawl space. Um, uh, behind sort of a bookshelf. And uh, it was a big deal in this house. Um, when I, you know, when I was a boy, we were painting on cave walls. Um, and we were using something <laughs> called Lincoln Logs, which is a similar construction concept, but made out of actual wood with dowels with, with sort of flat edges that you could stack into various constructions. But it wasn't brick like like Lego and they didn't hurt quite as much as when you stepped on them. Um, so uh, Legos were huge in this house with my kids, but they didn't exist when I was a kid. So um, I didn't build any. But I did participate in the building of the giant behemoths in, in that closet over there. And uh, yeah, what if, and this thing, by the way, another way to get swing would be to unevenly space the rows in the- Yeah. In you the, can't you know, do able... that. You try and do that. You can't do it. <laughs> it can't be done, man. You can't, can't do it. Book just says no. You were talking about varying, and Robert mentioned in the chat about uh, <laughs> modulating the speed of the motor. But um, in any case, um, I thought it was a fantastic little little video and device and cool idea. And uh, absent the electronics and the triggers, James Taylor basically did this out of wood and yeah. used to haul it out on stage. He used to introduce his drum machine and this gigantic wooden contraption would come wheeling out run by a motor that basically had the same kind of mechanical basis that drives this thing, except instead of initiating triggers, it's actually striking percussion instruments. And uh, that was his drum machine and he would perform. Nice. Ken Lewis says, uh, we got to go and visit the uh, uh, the uh, Museum of Play in Rochester, New York, which must be somewhere near you, as it's got a load of stuff there, so it might well be worth uh, uh, Lego, Lincoln Logs. I, I think that, I think in the UK, and they may have the same thing elsewhere, because these t things tend to get franchised everywhere, that isn't there a kind of a, a game show or a, a competition where they, where they build, uh, you know, you're given a task and teams have to build things out of Lego and they get kind of... Yeah. I think it might actually be a US-based yeah, thing. Yeah. I think they uh, should well, do a drum machine or, or instruments. Oh, is that? Okay. 
there's an Australian one and there's a British one. Not that I've watched them, obviously, not that they're on series record, which is absolutely true. I should admit to that. Yes, it does exist. <laughs> yeah. So, I think I, I mean as a kid I used to I used to make weapons out of Lego uh, um, which was perhaps less uh, constructive more destructive but uh, you could make a very fine crossbow out of Lego and uh, the train track rails um, they're, they're, oh, wow. they will okay. pen penetrate almost anything apart from steel I made a trebuchet as well and a uh, one of those ones where yeah where it's got, it, it used to turn and flick that yeah that wasn't quite so powerful the, the, the yeah, you're the saying this out loud by the way Nick <laughs> oh, right. oh, then yeah. I made a rifle then I made a, no. <laughs> then, um, no so I'll tell you how, so you you've been you've been here Nick You've been here, Rich. You know that the house is very white, white and minimal and white. And uh, the one thing that's allowed on display, because nothing's on display, there's no picture frame, there's no other thing, is, uh, is my daughter's Lego work, Harry Potter Lego work, which is permanently on display. <laughs> that's, right. how, that's how treasured Lego is in this house, that nothing else can go on display. You know, you know kids, when they do all the drawings when they and they bring them home and go... Daddy, here's a picture of a squirrel, and you go, yeah, that's. Yeah, got near that. Can I put it on the wall? Yeah, none of that, none of that. But I do have a <laughs> Lego on display. So, right, okay, well, that's fair enough. Fair enough. I, yeah, Lego didn't really get to my daughter. She's not really that. She's more uh, diff, diff, different set of skills. But uh, excellent. Okay, she had no well, choice. I wanted it to. Was, it was always going to happen. Sorry. Yeah, well, fair enough. Yeah, no choice. Trinated. Used to play Lego building manuals in uh, while, while while she was asleep. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> uh, anyway, I just thought that was uh, yeah. Back to music, guys. Said uh, John Van Eaton. You're probably right. I, I do hope we've actually got a a, 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 a video. Uh, anyway, what I'll do is I'll just have a quick word from our friends over at Isotope. Isotope Producers Club is a one of a kind membership for producers ready to take your tracks to the next level. Once you join, you'll gain access to powerhouse Isotope plugins and a curated selection of tools from our partners, such as Melodyne from Celimony. Plus, as long as you're a member, you'll get every future update to the Isotope plugins in your membership for no extra cost. We'll also regularly serve you new curated content like exclusive inspiration sparking sample packs and preset packs and industry leading training ranging from our own tutorials to vocal production lessons from the world-renowned Berkeley Online, taught by Grammy-winning producer and engineer, Prince Charles Alexander. With new content being added every month full of valuable production techniques, tips and tricks, and solutions to common production problems, becoming a member is an investment in your career that grows as you and your career do. For more information on Isotope Producers Club, head to isotope.com. And once again, we thank them very much for their uh, support of the show. In fact, if you head over to isotope.com forward slash Sonic Talk, there's a special landing page. And if you use the Sonic 10 code at checkout, you can save yourself 10% on anything. And we know they've just announced Ozone 10 and there's a whole bunch of goodies coming out. So you can say, actually, when I say anything, not Spire and not subscriptions, but any of the software bundles uh, and packages you can uh, or individual titles. So uh, once again, we thank them very much for uh, their sponsorship. OK, I better get onto some music then. I've been told. Uh, let me see. Oh gosh, I do hope I've got. Well, th this is this is less music, but still music related. So I hope this is good enough, John. Uh, so yeah, this is the this Fuse Audio Labs uh, S. Uh, it's V V Rev 305, which is actually based on a hardware unit. Which was Master Room XL305. Uh, I just, let's get on to some examples. So, multiple springs. It looks like a really advanced system. And there's some nice sounds. It's, got a, it's like a stereo spring, which for the time must have been quite unusual. It's a little smoother. I, I just thought this was interesting, partly because uh, it was also... Um, uh, just the actual unit itself. I'll see if I can find this because basically I, I thought I've never heard of that that effects unit. I'm just going to throw that in there, but let's see if I can get this to uh, to show up on our uh, um, on our web page. I did actually find it on. Uh, let me see. It was down here somewhere. It's, it showed up. There's an actual one. Master Room XL305 went for two and a half grand 
on reverb. Wow. So spring's the thing, right? I mean, big, big, you know, back in the day, I mean, many of many of our listeners won't be uh, um, will, will be kind of post DSP, but pre DSP, it was plates, it was springs, and springs. Used to, I mean, certainly perhaps when you're a kid, you might have had an old amp which had a spring in it or a, a spring on a guitar, uh, a guitar amp, guitar amp. It's a real, it's got a real iconic and very hard to replicate sound. Now, this, this one's 25 bu- uh, quid, actually, which and it runs VST, AU and all those things. So it's well worth checking out. Rich, I, don't, I mean, you've been mixing a, a little longer than I have. I imagine Spring Reverb, did Spring Reverb, do Spring Reverbs ever feature or is it mostly chambers and plates in the, the bigger studios that, you were, that you've been around in? Both, both. Um... Certainly at Kingdom Sound Studios, where I spent the majority of my training, we had uh, two EMTs, uh, which were, one was a plate, uh, the 140 plate, one was a 240 gold foil plate, and we had an AKG BX20 spring reverb that was about, I don't know, three and a half feet tall and, and uh, you know, two or two and a half feet square in each dimension. I mean, it was a giant sort of physical thing encased in wood and it sounded wonderful um of course we all grew up with spring reverbs and guitar amps and uh kicking them in here and that (laughs) noise thing and all that and uh and then we grew up with spring reverbs and some synths i believe the 2600 had a spring reverb and i'm that's true yeah or the ems the aks synthy had a spring reverb and probably the that's very true yeah of course um so we all grew up with spring reverbs it was an easy way to get that done and light Uh, but you could do it in a small space and it was light easy and inexpensive whereas i an AKG 140, uh, rather a EMT 140 plate is a giant thing suspended in a very heavy metal frame and built into a giant box and it's a big deal. At the power station they used to have at least five and maybe six EMT 140 plates that you could choose from. Nice, that was because... Well, uh, I know Will. Will Gregory's got uh, an EMT 240 which is out in the lobby of his studio. It's in a massive chip box. And well, the 240 comes is about half of... the size of the 140. Oh, maybe it's the big one. Maybe, maybe it's the, it's 140, the but it's got these bars yeah. that go in, and you have to. You know, yeah. So you have to. It's like it's like it's like carrying a coffin almost. You have to have that many people to kind of move it around. But he also has the AKG BX20, which does sound particularly lovely. Uh, mm-hmm. And you're right. It's it's in a, a, a this sort of mahogany case. I know, Ty. I mean, you know, in the world of media and 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 rep- repeatability and recallability, I, I, I don't suppose there's all that much room for for springs in your in your studio setup. Uh, but I may be no, wrong. The, ir- the irony is when I first started doing you know kind of getting into this when i was a lot younger and i I got in with my kind of first uh producer when i was really young and and started helping me i think the irony was that of course all he had was it was just a kind of home studio setup he had a you know kind of eight track reel to reel and he had uh had a couple of spring reverbs and of course that was because that was at the time that was really all there was and that was vaguely affordable and we did everything we could to kind of then move away from that when they when the first um digital reverb started appearing in at a vaguely reasonable price and he got one of those and it was just like oh my god we're never going to use spring again and yeah the, the the problem is is that there's something incredibly charming about it and no i don't have any you know everything i've got is dsp or um or in the box or whatever um but i use a lot of i do use a lot of spring reverb plugins um, oh, okay. Just because there's a quality to the sound, um, which is just it's unlike the normal reverb that we use. And so, what, what do you, you know, use I, them for on? me I personally? What, what? My, uh, drums, love them on drums, love them on guitar. If you get a good spring, spring reverb on guitar, especially the, the, you know, for me having a mono, a mono feed spring reverb right down the middle, just doesn't get in the way of anything. It just, you know, kind of, it just, it, it's almost like this, almost, it's almost like a tunnel, you know, kind of, it leads whatever's there and it kind of leads you right down the middle. So I do, I use that as a trick quite a lot, especially on snares and whatever, a lot of spring reverb on, on um, snares and guitars. Interesting. And, um, yeah, I, I love a good spring reverb. So, so yeah, I had, I, I'm, I'm glad you bought this one up because I hadn't, I hadn't seen this plugin at all. 
but it's, it looks and sounds lovely. And for that kind of money, I mean, God, you know, it's a bargain. Well, I mean, so it's funny it's, you should um, mention that. It does sound lovely. It does, yeah, it does it sound good. lovely. It sounds lovely, that's the thing, you know. Yeah, it does. Uh, the, interestingly, um, you mentioned that there used to be a reverb that we used to see when I used to go to a people's studio. It's Great British Spring, and it was in, it was in basically yeah. a, a length of PVC tubing, and it had some springs in it. And That's it. it. I, it was like a kit. Look, I've just found this on eBay. Look how much this is going for. This is absolutely insane. Two and a that's half. That's it. That's, grand. that's what. That's what. I'm not two being funny. That grand. was what. Paul, no, I mean two. You know, twenty-five quid maybe. That was basically wow. that he had one of those. That was he yeah. had one of those in his studio, and it was. I mean, they sound, they do sound fairly awful. And we did everything we could, but it, we kind of accepted. Well, this is all we've got, and everything had that sound on it. But um, two and a half grand—that's just ridiculous. That's insane, but, isn't it? I mean, it's mo and that's mono that as well. I, I presume, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But it, they, it uh, doesn't sound. It doesn't sound great. You know, it's not like the AKG. It's not like, you know, all the stuff that Rich was talking about. It's it's not. I wonder how, I, I, I'm it's, curious whether it's... there's any physical limitations. Because, I mean, you know, that springs come in crazy size. You know, you get massive springs like you, you would use on, you know, train suspension. You get these long, the, mm -hmm. the slinky springs and you get the, they're usually they're very, very thin, long springs, I think, because I presumably they will handle a uh, top end. I wonder what the mechanics and the, the materials are, how far you could go. I mean, if you built a spring reverb that was, the springs were, I don't know, 20 feet long and there were 10 of them in a big, big chamber, whether there would be any advantage to the more springs that you get in a thing. I suppose that BX20 must have had a decent length of spring in it, but most of that stuff would have been mounting in isolation, I would imagine, in the case, Rich. I don't know if you, you know of anything bigger than that, or maybe the chat room does, I don't know. No, hmm. I do remember devices like the Cooper, Cooper Time Cube, which was another kind of wacky little rack mounted mechanical ambience device and what was an ursa mm, major not... anyway was, was an ursa that major was digital or... wasn't it ursa ursa major, that was ursa a digital was, that was yeah that a, was digital, digital. a digital reverb yeah a anyway I, I think there's there's a there's a lot of uh, really interesting stuff and time to be had it with digital reverbs in fact i think um paulie bow who's uh, been on several times uh now taking some time out for that congratulations on the birth of his uh, uh, of their baby um he, They've done a, uh, a series on digital reverbs that they love, and it, it's, it's really good, really nicely done. I, so I'm, I'm assuming he perhaps hasn't had time to do any more episodes since the birth of the child, but, you know, I'm sure they'll be coming along in due course. Maybe in the next 15 years or so we'll see something coming along there. No, hopefully we'll get him back on the show. Uh, okay, right, I just wanted to throw that within. I thought that was fun. I hope, John Van Eaton, that's enough uh, music for you. Uh, let's see. Um, <laughs> Uh, come on, OPU, let's see. Back onto uh, Lego. <laughs> no, I'm not going to go. Oh, I wanted to do this. This is breaking news, actually. This is actually quite a big deal. I think this is uh, this is really big news. Uh, Digitac, Electron and Digitact, uh, uh, Digitone and uh, Syntact today released uh, Song Mode firmware update, which is kind of a fairly major paradigm shift for those whole things. Obviously, the Electron stuff has been pattern-based for eons you know since the beginning so a song mode is actually quite a big shift there's a load of other stuff in a lot digitone get uh sorry syntax gets a lot more sort of synth extra stuff uh overbridge gets 2.1.4 i guess if you're into the the electron and the diggy world then this is going to be really big news for you but i want to throw that in there i know ty have you got any electron stuff will you be uh, will be you composing your I cues have, in song mode from now on no i've only got I've got the machine drum and I've got the analog rhythm and the uh, distortion thing and yeah I haven't got right, any. So I've got a cycle. Nothing. I nothing got... with song mode. Nothing with song mode. Okay. So I don't know if you've got anything to add to that, Rich. Or I uh, I can move on if not. Uh, just. No, okay, Nothing fair enough. There. I just wanted to throw that in there because I think that was kind of a bit key. Uh, okay, well, here's another um, another another interesting piece of news. Uh, this is. Uh, What's the time? Yeah, we could do It's the this. sort of piece of software I think people will start using in ways we actually don't realise yet. Omnibus this is another one of these kind of behind-the-scenes OSX uh, audio routing system. Anywhere uh, inside your Mac. Omnibus. Like a, a virtual patch bay, in a way. 
pretty much everything so you get done inside the box. I mean, a lot of artists and producers will come to Abbey Road, they just bring their laptop, right? And then we plug that into whatever interface we've got here and they take it from there. There's so many tools and apps and... Yeah, I mean, there's not an awful lot of information on that. I did actually find some stuff. Uh, it's into all, basically, you get two drivers each with 16 I.O. that you can then patch. Uh, you've got recall ability, define channel layouts, and this is something, it's actually quite, it's surprisingly hard to do this in uh, an OS, OS level. There are a few utilities that allow you a few free, but in terms of something that's like maybe a more professional thing, I'm pretty sure Blue Cat Audio do something along these lines, but... Um, maybe there's a question that we may get to answer a little bit later on. This looks kind of interesting. I don't know, Rich, do you use much in terms of inter-app uh, routing and you know integrating one into the other without having to come back in the analog world? This looks useful. Yes, it does. It looks useful, yes. And by the way, does the voice sound okay now? I've made a few changes. Yeah, it's fine. Okay, it's good. fine. I tried to get rid of some of the noise. Thank um, you. Uh, this looks like a great product. I didn't get a chance to do a deep dive on it. Do I use products that do this kind of thing? Yes. The products I use are by a company called Rogue Amoeba. And yeah. there's a loopback product that they have that I've used. And there's something called SoundSource, which kind of hops on the back of the Apple sound control panel and gives you access on a per-app basis not only to I.O. routing, but also you can drop plugins into individual sources and uh, do things like that. So I do use things that play with the internal routing of the audio within the computer, and they, in my case, are by Rogue Amoeba. If this thing works as advertised, it should be a really useful tool for exactly what he was describing, which is the client who comes in with multi-track work and wants to be able to break it out to whatever console they're using or whatever format they're using and uh, this would enable you to do that easily though one would presume that the interfaces mixer software would also provide that functionality yeah you think so wouldn't you i guess uh, i should point out actually uh this is uh 49.99 but you've got up to five uh macs you can use with it. it is mac only obviously because of the way that it works within that but um, yeah, it is a re uh, this is something that I kind of struggle, particularly when we're doing lots of uh, remote interviews with people who are trying to demo software and they want to send me the output of their software, but they don't want the video conferencing of my voice coming back in and coming back out again. These sort of things are really kind of, I, the, the Rogue Amiga stuff is good. I think it's quite expensive. It's, it was around about 100 bucks or 70 bucks. It must be cheaper than that well, now. I think. Loopback so, is about that, yes. Loopback is somewhere yeah, yeah. north of 50 bucks and uh, sound source is like 30 30 or 40 dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's very, I mean, I know, Ty, I mean, your system is kind of fixed generally. You know, you're probably not required. Do you need to root into app stuff? No, I, mean, I guess it would be helpful. Do you know what? I, not not really, but I tell you what it is, is the fact that I my, my, my setup is kind of set for, the, and it's been the same kind of setup, the way it's set up for, for so long now. Um, and when things have become difficult or... I've just literally gone, okay, I can't do that. That's fine. And I'll find a way around it or I'll do this. So every time I come up against an obstacle, normally because it's normally against time, you know, time is money and blah, blah, blah. So if I come up against an obstacle, I just go, okay, well, I can't use that. I can't do that. I'll find an alternative. I use an alternative. And I've done, I kind of realized over the years, I think I've done that a lot. But now I have this kind of balanced setup that I kind of think, okay, I know what I can do and I know what I can't do easily. And so I just won't, whatever I can't do easily, I just, might do and initially when i saw this i just thought oh yeah this would be what's the point for me what's the point of this for me it looks a great product i'm sure for a lot of people it'd be very useful i tend not to use everything's built into the door and i'm not really bothered about uh, separate apps coming in and blah, blah. but as i was watching it i was thinking oh god that now means that i could do this and that would actually now be quite easy whereas when i tried to do it 10 years ago it was impossible and so Although at this moment in time, do I need this app? No, no, I'd have no need for this. But I actually start to think, I honestly think if I sat down for an afternoon and started planning, I think this could actually be incredibly, incredibly useful. I think it could be just make things that up until now for me have been impossible, actually make them doable. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, the reality is I'm going to sit here and, you know, kind of after when I get time, I'm going to sit down and look into this properly. 
And mm. I think I'd probably end up getting this because I just think it will just enable me to do things that for decades now I just I've just assumed I couldn't do or just avoided. Um, well, because as you there, say, there, you know, yeah. just yeah, trying to get things to talk to one another sometimes is just you know it's really difficult. So. Yeah and, yeah, and root the one thing that you need, but not the other thing. Yeah, sometimes it's just like all or nothing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it sounds... There are some alternatives. I did find some really good stuff on... Uh, actually, this is one of my picks that's been sitting around for ages. Uh, on, on the PC, there's something called VB Audio Voice Meter with two Es. That's really handy, and that's like a virtual driver that you can run stuff in and then pipe that back into other applications. There's a free and a other version of that. And the other thing is... Um, on the Mac, there's something called background audio, which what that does is gives you it's it's a it's a it's a, again a free thing, and you get a menu item. It drops down and it gives you the level of each application. So you've you basically got volume of each of the applications, and then you can send all of that mix to a virtual driver, which might be you know to uh, a remote um, thing or whatever. And it, that's really handy, and that's a free thing. But uh, it's not, nothing like as flexible as as this. The the audio movers guys and gals are are the people who do listen to, which is sort of universally used for people checking mixes you it's a plug-in you run on your daw and it just streams out at varying qualities mm -hmm. and varying uh, amounts of latency mm -hmm. so people could be listen to the mix that you are doing remotely and but in good quality without compression i don't know rich you are nodding there you've, you've probably used that right mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, and i think yoad um the friends of yoad and here i think he had a, a a hand in kind of suggesting what listen to should be but uh, yeah i thought that was kind of cool all right um we'll just take a break and let's uh, have a word from our friends over at baby audio uh, of course uh baby audio uh makes creative effects plugins designed to add color and depth to your mixes they won plugin of the year 2021 and future music and computer music magazine magazine nominated for the sos awards two years in a row uh, why not check out crystalline which is a great algorithm reverb plugin inspired by classic 20th century studio reverbs but offering higher fidelity thanks to 21st century computing power. It's got creative features such as the ability to tempo sync pre-delay and also reverb decay times. Very interesting actually. Uh, you can get 15% off by checking out with the code ST15. If you go to babyaudio.com and when you check out use the code ST15 save 15% on their products and we thank them for their support. Okay um, <clears throat> Let's see what uh, I got. I got me. me uh, I've got loads of stuff in there. Right. Um, bring a uh, Lego drum machine. Ah, OK. I'm going to go with this one because this has been hanging around for a while and I've been meaning to talk about it. So uh, let's just check it out. It's the new uh, or relatively new was new a few weeks ago. Uh, Coal Fire Distortion Plugin. Really interesting. Uh, it's tw twin channel, multi algorithm. 11 distortion algorithms. I think it's 99 euros. It's not, you know, the bottom of the, the heap in terms of price, but some really interesting stuff there. I, again, I won't play the whole thing, but I, this struck me as the idea with this was also because digital distortion and that kind of stuff in plug-in format for a very long time was never, it was always lacking a little something. I think, in, you know, in subsequent iterations, this has actually changed considerably. And I don't know if anyone's had a chance to check this. I know, uh, Ty, you're a, a user of Artoria stuff, so it may well already be something that you've uh, stuck across things. Because you were talking, you had analog heat, which is essentially an analog kind yeah. of processing thing that would probably do lots of similar things. That's probably quite a crossover. Have you checked this out? I've got this. I love a bit of filth. I love a bit of dirt, and this is uh, absolutely fantastic. Ah, simple okay. as that. Honestly, it's just, it's as simple as that. There's nothing more to it. And also the fact that because, obviously, if you own, uh, own certain things within the Arturo family, you get discounts and all this kind of thing. So I think it only cost me something ridiculous like $29 or £29 or something like that. Um, I can't remember. Whatever the upgrade was, it wasn't a lot of money. Um, but even at, at 99, it's, uh, it's a kind of one-stop shop for all, shop for all things, all things, filth, filth, basically, basically it's, 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 it's really it's good, really good. You know, it's, uh, yeah. Sorry, Rich, there's, 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 I'm just getting, I'm getting tie back uh, down your, uh, down your, down your, down your microphone now, which has just started happening, which is a bit, uh, yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, that's interesting. It, yeah, it's. I think the thing is because it's got the two engines and the, the the modulation side of things just makes it incredibly creative. Um, 
you can do some does wonderful it do, does things. Does it do gentle? Modulation. Does it do kind of, does it do stuff? That's yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, yeah it, does, okay. it does nice, such, no, it does saturation really nicely as well. You see, this is the problem. That's, that's actually the real problem with it when it comes to doing things in the box. It's kind of not the extreme stuff because the extreme stuff, you know, it can, it can cover its woes. It's when it does the saturation that's, um, the subtler stuff that's more difficult and it's nice it's, it is i don't know whether it's as good as some of the soft tube for the gentle stuff some of the soft, soft tube stuff is really really lovely and um or some of the um the bx stuff from um plain alliance some of their stuff that's all uh, the right. subtler stuff is nice but for the, for the more creative stuff yeah and for the more creative stuff um it, it's yeah <laughs> it's honestly it's every now and again you know when you get a piece of software that i, I always say this if, if you get something that just makes its way into your template for me that's always means that's a that's that's a good one. and and um, that interesting uh, within oh. a couple of days of trying that out that's gone into my template so it's um it's my kind of go-to at the moment for anything filthy and distorted and you know kind of yeah, really very, 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 very good. And although you're right, not you know, hundred pounds or hundred um dollars or whatever, yeah, it's, it, it's not cheap. But God, it's yeah. It's okay, worth no, it. good. That's very good. Uh Rich, I suppose I mean, you know, uh, certainly in the studio work you've probably got access to a lot more of the the real deal where you might bus out and kind of saturate things in. But I mean I know we're using a lot of it. I know that uh, sound toys have got some great saturation plugins and great distortion plugins, but it it, it up until kind of quite recently, that was actually almost the the exception. You know, it was hard to find really, really good stuff, and now it's getting better and better and better, right? I wonder if this is a combination. Do you tend to use extreme distortion in your work? I suppose it might be parallel rather than just the, the full thing. I don't know. I use them sometimes. They kind of give... They kind of give stuff life sometimes that i can't mm. find any other way to get injected into the sound of the thing um and this did look to me like an amalgamation of pretty much all of the sound toys and then and some of the sound saturation plugins as well that you see out there now because pretty much everything is coming with uh certainly uh, for example i use console one by soft tube and all of the console emulations you see these days tend to have some kind of drive control which mimics what that circuit did when you drove it hard and uh so various you know from at one end of the spectrum saturation and at the other end of the spectrum extreme distortion and all the steps in between i have been finding it really really useful these days to add some dirt to otherwise pristine digital audio stuff that needs a little bit of life and something to bring it out of its sort of uh, natural flat state mm. Yeah, yeah. Well, that, there's that thing that uh, I remember uh, doing a few times where you run a quite heavily distorted signal. And you sort of, it's, I mean, it's essentially what excitement is in a way. You know, you distort in the top end and you bring a little bit of it underneath and it just has this sort of weird, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, imperceptible sizzle at the top. So there are lots of flavours. So parallel processing with distortion can be really, uh, really cool. OK, um, I think what we might do now is uh, get on to some of our questions because uh, this is a new feature. Ty, having not been here since May, you won't have seen any of this stuff. So this is all new. This is, you can ex enjoy the full bask of it. So we've been asking people to vote a little bit on questions as well. So um, and I'm going to go to this one first because it's actually uh, perhaps more immediately appropriate uh, uh, um, to, to, to what we're talking about. So uh, let's just bring this one up. This is from uh, Dragon Slayer via Twitter. It's going to be hard to read that for you. Uh, what options are there for people who wish to run older plugins that are dropped unceremoniously from the developers like Absinthe, B4, Pro 5, 3, Spectral Delay? I'm assuming that maybe Blue Cat's patchwork would be a good solution <coughs> since it would allow one to run VSTs in a VST3 only host like Keybase. Actually, um, I'm going to come to you, Rich, because I know uh, Patchworks is a really cool... I, I was looking this up and it looks like one of the only ways to run via uh, pre VST3 plugins inside a VST3 only host now, right? That I don't know if it's one of the only ways, but it is a way to do it. And it is something that will host pretty much anything um, outside, you know, any format and in any configuration and in any way. And it also has 
individual MIDI controls for every single slot on the board, which are pretty, which is pretty remarkable. The degree to which you can control things that way. Um, but as for the problem described in the question, say in the case of Absinthe Four, which has been sort of a thorn in my side for many years now. Um, the simple truth is it won't install in any operating system I'm running. It's not that I can't host it. It's that I can't install it. It won't run. Right. So, it, you know, you can have patchwork all day long, but if your plugin won't install in the operating system that you're running patchwork in, it doesn't matter. So um, I don't know what the solution is to people dropping support or not being backwards compatible in a way that is suitable and constructive. I could cite infamous examples, some of them extremely painful when it comes to retrospect, for example, where they just right in the middle of everything yeah. dropped support for their previous libraries and said, good luck. <laughs> And mm -hmm. uh, I thought you guys were in the data security business. You just told me to go, uh, you know what? Um, you know, so it, it, there's, and it's not limited to music, obviously. It's, it's uh, throughout that industry and it's sort of the nature of technology. And we can have a nice long discussion over a few beers about why that is and how that happens. But the fact is it does. And uh, nothing, nothing seemingly is forever in this game. And uh, look at what we did with, I mean, and it's not just digital. Look at what we did with analog masters. Nobody knows where their masters are. And when they finally do find them, they're either unplayable or they're hard to get to. Or if you do get them and get them played, it's, you know, it's, we haven't been terribly good guardians of our legacy and of our creative history. In, yeah, in this yeah, regard. yeah, yeah. No, that's a fair point. Yeah, Ty, I mean, I guess, you know, keep keep a machine <laughs> ready if you need it. That's keep it. A machine that'll that, run it. That literally, unfortunately, it's, it's a sad state of affairs, but that is basically it. I mean, I've got machines going back several operating systems, and they literally do just sit there and collect dust, and I hope that one day, if I ever do have to boot them up or whatever, they uh, will boot up. But the reality is I don't even know whether that will happen because some of them, you know, uh, the reason I have to do it as well is um, because there's always doing what I do. There's all exactly the same as with, um, which was talking about analog masters. For me, it's, there are always projects that go back, you know, kind of for decades now. And there's always the chance that someone could come to me and go, you know, that series that you did in 2002, um, so and so really want to use that track, but they want the stems from it. And I won't, you know, kind of. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Some of us, if they did something like that, some, yeah, and I always turn around and go, that may be impossible, or it may be possible. I've kept all of the, um, all the dongles. I've kept the software on that wow. model, and you may be able to get all of it. You may be able to get eighty percent of it. You may be able to get none of it back. But it's you know kind of it's, um, it's has that affected has that through. affected the way that you kind of finish a project now so do you print everything out and have those things kind of kept i mean it, do you do, has it affected the way yeah. you would work yeah it now now basically before it, the whole point of me taking this downtime is a big chunk of this downtime will be taken going back to projects and basically um exporting as anything that i think is going to be you know, kind of worthwhile as as stems, and it's not enjoyable. It's the most mind blowingly dumb, boring isn't that, thing isn't to that do. A job an assistant, but assistant should be doing that, surely. Yeah, but I'm in the middle of the Cotswolds. Try and get an assistant in the Cotswolds that knows what they're doing, and I trust to do things. Uh, okay. It's fine. I, you know, it's um, it's. But you're right. You're exactly what it is. It is the kind of thing that you get an assistant in to do. But. Um, but yeah, but in terms of plugins, I'm you know I'm that person that has got a whole machine that basically just has got Alchemy still on it. You know, I've still right. got a machine which the sole purpose of this machine was the fact that Alchemy was when it was um, as it was. Um, Camel Audio, yeah. And I had bought, yeah. yeah, I bought so so much of the Camel Audio. I bought all the Camel Audio stuff and all of the expansion packs and everything for Alchemy. And I've got a machine that that just sits on. And but the problem is, what I don't do is I don't get. And, and exactly what we're talking about, I don't get precious about these things because um, 
I, I do, I've kind of seen exactly what we're talking about. Nothing is forever these days. And you do, but you, I work on the assumption that any minute, any day, one of these manufacturers is going to go, yeah, we don't support this anymore. It's not going to work on this. When you upgrade, it's not going to work. And I work on that assumption. So I always just kind of work on, I always just kind of have that attitude of, what can I do about it? I've got to, I've got to work. I've got to move on. So I'll kind of go elsewhere. But down the line, there were loads of plugins that at the time I used all the time and really loved and, and, and they've gone, they've just, you, you don't, you know, you can't use them anymore. And I've, there's just an acceptance. What I don't do is I don't, I'm not one of those brigade who fight for it. Do you know what I mean? They kind of sit there yeah. screaming and shouting and it's the end of the world and whatever. It's not fair. It's not fair. And we've paid good money for it. And so we should have yeah. every right for it to, in our head, last forever. But the reality is that's what hardware's for. That, and, you know, kind of software for me is just something that at any moment software could stop being supported. Whereas hardware, as long as you've got a machine that's working, do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm yeah, hoping yeah, yeah. that in two years' time I can switch it on and it's still going to work for me. Um, yeah. Well, no, that's but, yeah, the, that, the answer is just keep old machines if you can logistically afford to keep old machines. Well, par I, I mean, I think know, maybe uh, parallelization, parallelization, I mean, it used to be, you know, and, and running virtual machines may be an option at some point. I mean, that would be the idea. Yeah, I mean, if there was absolutely. a way to kind of go, this machine I've got here, can we just kind of cryogenically freeze it, in, you know, in digital form, and then I can run it on any computing platform via some outer shell that will just go, yeah, I can boot up. What do you want me to use as a disk drive? What do you want me to use for the keyboard input? Let's go. You know, and that's what we would, yeah. and to a degree, that's what parallelization and that's what uh, vi uh, virtual machines are running software on for those sort of reasons. But again, that technology moves on. So then the virtual machine, you know, I don't know whether or not those parallel machines like VM, the, the, VMware, the problem and, is, and all that stuff. The problem is, you can spend as long sorting that out as you do actually being creative. And that's where my problem yeah. is along the line is your absolute, yeah. everything you've described is you know, doable, but it's the fact that you spend as much time sorting that out and doing all of that when, you know, you could be creating, you could be, you know, that's, I that's see, my, I, you know, I see that's you the nodding answer. there, Rich. I'm guessing, you know, you, these are, these are, these are issues that uh, all of us deal with in the digital age, I suppose, really. Absolutely. And what I do is I use something else. Like, what was I trying to do <laughs> That's here? That's not That's loading. It. That's it. If, it's a, if yeah. it's a virtual instrument, it's a little more complicated because it's the sound source rather than the sound modifier. So you have to go, try to get back into your head about what I was trying to do with this track and then load something that you think might work and play around with it until it does. And chances are you're the only one who's going to know at the end of the day. But if it's more like some kind of compressor or something that doesn't load, well, you just put up another yeah. compressor and do what you do. I mean, you yeah. just, yeah, sure, it's not exactly the same, but it's what you have. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a fact. And, and right. fretting no, about it, gets, it isn't going to help. Yeah. If it gets in the way of you doing what you wanted to do in the first place, just use something else. No one's really going to, the amount of times that I've done that, the amount of times that I've opened up a plugin or a library and it's all gone a bit, it's all gone a bit tits up. I, you know, I could sit there for the next six hours trying to get it to work, or I could just load something else on and get the idea down. And you know, no one's going to know any different. So, and I'll be no less satisfied with it. It just rather than yeah. first choice, it was second choice. You know. Okay. All right. So, well, great question, Dragon Slayer. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Um, we should probably have uh, another question. Oh, we've got everybody here. I'm going to put this one uh, up too. Let me just throw that up there. So this one is from uh, Nicholas Bryant via. Uh, no, it's not. Uh, hold on one second. It's that button. I do beg your pardon. It's Nicholas Bryant via YouTube. What's your worst behaving item or instrument that you can't replace yet? That's a great question. Rich. Worst have you got something? Worst behavior. I mean, so I guess something that's kind of broken or doesn't work right, but you can't replace it because <laughs> for whatever reason. My attitude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my talent. <laughs> no, my attitude, you know, just when I get down on things or, you know, depressed or let things overwhelm me or whatever that, that would be. I mean, if you talk gear, I don't know. 
Um, I try not to harp on those things. Um, yeah. <laughs> I just try to move past them like we were just describing. It's like, all right, yeah, if I that didn't work, just... I'll do something else. You know, like I'm, you know, still yeah, futz yeah. I'm still futzing with this microphone sound to see if I can make it quieter for you. You know, like it's, I, I'm consumed right now with that. But, but, uh, <laughs> but, and I hope it sounds better now. But anyway. It does. Um, I, I've, I've added 16 dB of gain this end to get you up. Yeah, up I've right shut level. down a bunch of gain here at this end. So <laughs> okay. I think I was yeah. just like sending too much and maybe that's probably it but anyway um i can't think of anything i mean you know any given thing that isn't working right now is that thing and besides yeah. that it's my attitude <laughs> yeah well fair enough i i got well i've got a no. uh, i've got a yamaha cs15 that i really want to use a lot but every time i switch it on it just crunches or the juno 106 but i suppose i could i mean you know there's a boutique that will probably sound just the same and it's smaller and that's the problem i've got these lovely old keyboards but i don't necessarily have room to have them fully operational and around me so i can just reach for them because you know but and i could find something else if i was using that all day then i would probably get myself one of the boutiques and do it that way. I don't know whether you have any anything similar going do you know, on. Time. Exactly. It's, it's these two for me. These two questions are it's, it's bonkers that they've come up together because I've got exactly the same attitude with that at any one time. I mean, years ago when I had a lot of uh, a lot of um, uh, vintage analog stuff. Uh, at any one time there was nothing there was never a time when everything was working there was just never a time there would always be something that would be needing to get looked at and that's kind of part of the reason why years ago i got rid of all of it because it was just getting in the way of of recall and work and all that kind of thing so i got rid of all my vintage stuff apart from of all things an mc202 and that was the only thing i kept and um I got rid of everything. And then as it's kind of all come back in, even now, I mean, there's about, I think there's 15, 16 things that need to go down to Kent, uh, you know, right. kind of to at the fixed. moment, right. to be fixed or sorted or whatever. But it, exactly as Rich said, I've got the same attitude as I am with software, which is I kind of go, oh, okay, I'll try this and use this. And, and if it's not working, I will literally just go, okay, well, I'll, I'll use something else. And I'm very fortunate. Don't get, I'm very fortunate that I have stuff that I can turn to and I can use other things. But it is that attitude of the you know if it's if it's again it's, I'm not precious about what's going on in my head. It's just it's it's all about the if one thing doesn't work, I'll just use something else. But for me, if I could, one thing that's annoying me at the moment that isn't working. Uh, I've got a Synthex that uh, is not working properly, and I desperately want to use it on one of the things I'm. Um, doing at the moment and the reason it's really annoying is I really want to use it and it's just not reliable enough at the moment but you know mm. there's so many I've got so many things where it's literally odds, sods, odds and sods that this doesn't work or that you know they all need looking at yeah um, yeah which I, is all I, the more traction for me of buying the more modern stuff yeah you know that's that makes sense. that's why that's that so sense. appealing to me so well, uh, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, uh, chaps. Uh, and thanks, everybody in the chat room for uh, dropping those questions in. Uh, there will be more. Don't forget, if you if you want, uh, what I will now do is at, at the end of the show, I set up the next week's show and you can just leave questions in that and we'll we'll big up. We've got a big pile. I know we've probably got more questions than we have answers at the moment, but that's good. We can get through to them. We could do a show which is Q&A only uh, in the, sometime in the future. Do keep them coming. And if you want to vote on any of those questions, uh, I think there's a, have I got, if I cut and paste, if I, yeah, you can use, no, that's not it. It's the, uh, let me find the URL. I'll post it in the chat. Uh, if you want to vote on the live questions, it, it helps, you know, see the more popular ones come to the top. I'm not promising that I'm going to stick totally to the charts because sometimes questions are relevant to the panelists that we have, but there's the URL if you need it. Chaps, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Ty, I'm so glad you could join us. It's great to, to talk to you. It's always a pleasure to have you, and I, I, I look forward to more in the future. I'm sorry. When your the project no, no, for the absolutely. year is done. Well, only a few weeks. Then, then yeah. Hey. No, no, no. I'll try and make sure that I kind of keep some... Exactly, believe me, it is like that. I'll try and keep some Wednesday free and, and definitely hop on, but thanks for having me. I can't believe it's been May. I mean, we actually... It's it's depressing when you think about it like that. And even that, I think yeah. in May we were there going, I haven't been on for six months, so it's... Um, Could have been, yeah. Well, I'll try you know, and work on. is work. Anyway, lovely to, lovely to have you, Ty. And also, Rich, lovely thanks for joining us as well. Are you uh, are you off out, out to another in and out gig um, soon, or have you got some more time time out? 
tomorrow. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> going, going anywhere nicer? Uh, Central Park in New York. Oh, um, wow. That sounds good. And, and that sounds uh, so that's a drive, drive back and forth one. And, uh, nice and then, easy. Then we're home for a couple of weeks and then, and then more stuff happens. Nice. Well, folks, thank you very much. That was great fun. And thanks, everybody, in the chat. And thanks to our sponsors. Uh, and we'll see you all next week for another show. Uh, that was uh, Sonic Talk number 730. See you next time. Bye-bye now. <laughs>